Good afternoon. Christ is risen. Can we help but rejoice? <laughs> I am Suzanne Johannesson Ralph, Dr. Carl's mother, mother to his brother and his sister, widow of Dr. Robert Johannesson, widow of Colonel Donald Ralph. More importantly, I am a child of God created to serve and glorify God, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Now, wasn't always that way. I spent my childhood going foster home to foster home to foster home. Now, mothers, I want you to conjure the most horrible child that God ever created. I was, in fact, truly by nature, sinful and unclean. And it went that way for many, many, many years. But, well, not that many years. But around the age of six, at one of the homes, I was introduced to Sunday school. My favorite, favorite thing to do for the whole week was to go to Sunday school. And I got taken by neighbors, not by family. But I learned about God, and I learned that God had created all these wonderful things that I love so much. Birds, flowers, the animals on the farm. But it didn't make much impression. No need for me to change my horrible ways. Couldn't see any reason whatsoever. Around about 10, 10 and a half, I was always a good reader. And I began to crave the Word of God just going to Sunday school on Sundays in here. And I read, and I read, and I read to the point of disobedience. I missed that part, hiding under my covers with a flashlight so that I could read the Word of God, mostly the book of John. Um, in the, about that, around about that time in the spring, following my 10th birthday, this awareness came, and even at this point, I was still, of course, learning, and I, but I realized it was not these people that I was offending. It was a holy, perfect God that I was offending, a God... Uh, mighty, powerful, who loved me and the world so much that he sacrificed all for our sins, leaving his heavenly home, word made flesh, that we might learn of him. He suffered ridicule, torture, crucifixion for my sins and yours. My grief was great, and I begged his forgiveness realizing it was not people I was offending, but this holy God. My resolve was great that I would love him, keep his commandments, strive to conform to his image. My school teacher, who had no way of knowing anything about this, wrote some very, very treasured words on my report card. It said, she is changed. And indeed I was. Some say, how can this be under such circumstances at such a young age? My answer is, never, ever underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit. He had mercy on me. Uh, shortly after this time, I went yet to another home. It was to be my forever home. Herbert and Esther Willis soon became mother and papa. And guess what? They were members of my church that I thought was my church, Central Baptist Church, Chesterfield County, Virginia. Gospel preaching, family loving church. 
It still stands, by the way, much larger now. Uh, after this time, I arrived, and I find that these are not people who just go to church once in a while. These are not people who send me to Sunday school. These are Christians. We prayed. There was prayer in our family every day. We were um, relegated to our rooms early in the evening to study our Sunday school lessons, to do our memory verses for the Sunday morning services, to do our memory verses for Sunday evening services. And at that time, we had a group that was called the Girls Auxiliary. Um, it was strictly for young ladies. And during the week we met, and we studied the scripture, and we studied the scripture, and we recited the scriptures, and we're given the privilege of standing before the congregation to recite to them what we had learned. So on it went to this wonderful time of salvation. And I asked if I could be baptized at about 11 and a half. No, you're too young. So I waited and waited and studied and waited. Finally, prior to my 13th birthday, I was baptized. A joyous day indeed. Uh, Redeemed, again, I'll say, redeemed and washed in the blood of the Lamb. Have I lived a perfect life? No. But when I stumble, I grieve and I repent. And I strive, working, striving for sanctification. Striving till to conform to the image of Christ. Clinging to his righteousness and his promises. Now... Are you, have y'all had enough, or would you like me to? <laughs> okay, Miss Karen asked me one day, what is it that you want people to know? And I gave her a flippant answer, the one I give to all the ladies, you need to know how to sew. It's important. It teaches you patience. <laughs> okay. But it prompted me to do some more serious thinking. So if you're, any of you are here who have not made these conclusions and these commitments, I, of course, cannot list all of the things that I want you to know, but here are some things I really, really want to make sure that everyone studies, ponders, contemplates any adjective that you can come up with to lead you further into sanctification. God, our holy heavenly Father, creator of all things, giver of all life, has many marvelous attributes. He is love, he's mercy, grace, wrath. He is all-knowing, all-seeing, ever-present. Know this, he is sovereign. Therefore, there is but one true God. Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, Redeemer, Son of God, God made flesh, humbled himself, came to us in human form, and dwelt with us. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He lived a sinless life, teaching and instructing in the ways to walk with God and to strive to conform to his image. He gave himself for our sins that we might obtain forgiveness and eternal life with him, by him we are justified. By him we are sanctified. He suffered persecution, tortures, death on the cross, rose again on the third day, as had been prophesied, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from whence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Know this. He is King of King and Lord of Lords. The Holy Spirit, our comforter, guides us, dwells with us, and within those who hear the call of Christ. Know this, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are three in one. Knowing these things, we cannot help but be fully, fully humbled. Humility begets repentance. With broken, broken contrite heart, we see what sinful, rebellious, and undeserving children we are. And we seek to change our ways. 
and to earnestly, prayerfully plead for his mercy and grace and to strive to conform to his image. Repentance begets service with grateful heart. We have the gift of his Holy Spirit. And his holy word, the Bible, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Know this, we are created to serve and glorify God in accordance with his word and his will. Know this. Satan, our adversary, roams about, seeking whom he may devour. And know this, ultimately, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess, Jesus Christ is Lord.